Still a little bit off from yesterday's therapy session. Wondering if you have some insight. <clears throat> we went deep into past relationship stuff, which I've been putting off talking about for months. Feeling raw, exposed, vulnerable, anxious. I know it will lead to feeling better in the long run. Also feeling anxiety that this conversation will continue next session. Oh, it very well could, Nix. Uh, what I would say is what you're talking about, probably to some extent, is distress tolerance. So because stuff got stirred up understandably so you're also you're now having to confront your level of distress tolerance around this stuff so uh in terms of like my insight into it it's 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 would be to say that it's common to be uncomfortable in that type of situation and i think if it feels like it's too much then you ought to tell your therapist that you feel like you're going a little bit too fast and that you'd like to slow down it's always okay to do that and especially if you're feeling preemptive anxiety about it. I know that if I had a client email me and say, hey, our last conversation was pretty intense and it's got me kind of anxious about the next session. I just want to give you a heads up so that you're ready for that. I know that I would really appreciate that. So that could be worth a, uh, worth a shot. Too. Almost literally ran away from the source. If it spared you a panic attack, Rouse, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Goof off, thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate that. I'm sorry it took me so long to acknowledge it, but thank you very much for the three months. My most recent relationship, it took work to get to a point where I could even acknowledge that she didn't give me the level of support that I needed. I went several months thinking, well, who could blame her for leaving, having to put up with me? Yeah. It's cool that you can articulate that staircase. Honestly, that's a big deal. I'm enjoying Death Stranding a lot, Squeeze Toy. It's been a lot of fun. It's a great game for me to be able to chat and talk with Good people morning, while I play. Blood collection complete. I think the UCA is gaslighting Sam Porter Bridges. You know, I've had that thought goof off, but then recent events with the mules is starting to take me over to the other side where I'm starting to wonder if maybe I am working for the good guys. I'm still skeptical, though. Zoiku, good evening. Hello to anybody else who I may have missed coming in here or anybody who's lurking i'm not trying to pull you out of lurk i just want to acknowledge that i see you and that i'm grateful you're here tonight well jay so jay if you're not on the just as a heads up i don't know if this is the case for you but this is a good way for me to talk about this if you're not on zeph's service agreement that therapist will not be able to confirm or deny that they see zeph so if there's something that you're thinking Zeph needs to say to the therapist, you might want to encourage Zeph to do it. Because it's one thing for somebody who has a service agreement with me to send me an email. It's another thing for somebody else to send an email on their behalf. That kind of puts the therapist in a weird spot. My co-signer is backing out of the contract because they want me to move back home. I don't want to, but I can't tell them no. Is there any tips to taking to them without venting my frustrations and normal yelling matches that happen? uh i don't know that there's any i don't know how useful anything i would say about that would be shy red without knowing much about your situation that certainly sounds frustrating i mean no you're maybe knowing boundaries going into that situation being able to talk about your experience using i statements validating whatever might be going on for them and doing your best to listen and acknowledge that type of thing i mean those are general tips that i give in any situation can you imagine, Playful, if I got banned because I showed Norman Reedus' ass on stream because it's part of the game I'm playing? Yeah, he's like Bruce Almighty, Gecko. It's ridiculous how fast he gets dressed. It cracks me up. Did you ever watch the whole VOD of that thing I sent you? I did not watch the entire VOD. Uh, it was just too long, Playful. I, watching that for three hours was just too much for me. But I have taken uh, more of a look at that process of what's kind of going on there. And I find it interesting and it may be somewhat frustrating, but I'm going to abstain from giving too much commentary on it. Uh, I'm not really, I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of stepping into that kind of thing and providing comments on it, especially since I have not met either of the people in that situation i will say that i'm a bit frustrated that something like that got posted on stream on live stream fails that to me is quite disappointing that that was the case but 
but yeah, I it's it's a it's too sticky a territory for me to do too much commentary on that. So, but no, I did not watch the whole three hours. I I couldn't. I will say that I've had conversations with other people back channel about it. So if there's anything specific you want to talk about it with me specifically, playful, I'm happy to talk about it behind the scenes if you want on Discord. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a great subreddit. I would agree. Uh, Also, I don't know what I'm... I do not remember what I'm supposed to be doing right now in this. Crack Gecko cracks me up. Yeah, usually... So, the nice thing is, as a therapist, when a client who has the thing they need to say to me says it to me directly, instead of... Uh, having somebody else say it on their behalf. Uh, view active orders. Okay. Retrieval of the sticky guns. Oh, man. I just would like to get rid of that one. Bonsai tree planting kits. Vintage wine. I don't want to do that. Okay. Chiro return defective chiral printer cartridges. Collection of junk for the watchtower repair. So it might delivery time limit one hour. I'm guessing that's the one that I need to do. I'm confused. Does anybody remember what the last order I took was and where I'm where I'm where I'm supposed to go? What I'm supposed to go? What I'm supposed to do? How do I cancel the jobs, goof off? Do you know how I do that? Oh my god, Gecko. I had to read that like two times in my head before I got what you said there. Most people consider Twitch chat to be king. <laughs> I mean, I, so that's the funny thing, by the way, about... The t about like when people are all weird about like Twitch chat and stuff is like this Twitch chat has only ever been great. I have never really had an issue with anything that's happened. All right, we're going to hop on the bike. And I'm just going to kind of drive and see what's up. Because I've clearly got stuff on my back. There's clearly somewhere I'm supposed to go. We'll figure it out. Bring up your menu and you can go to orders and cancel them there. Okay. I'm going to do that. Because that'll be helpful. Thank you, Goof Off. Hello, Saimu. Oh, wait. What the hell? Mods are doing a great job. Mods have... Oh, shit. We got a cutscene. Mods here do, do an excellent job, though. What is happening? All right. Well, we're off to a good start. Like my otter hood. What the hell? It's about to get real, y'all. An otter hood makes it. That that makes it makes it. Shy Red, I don't know if I answered your question. Killing my friends yesterday was was super fun. I played as the trapper. It was the first time I've ever been the killer, and I won. I killed everybody. It was awesome. Alright, let's roll. Here we go. Here we go. I'm so scared. What is this storm?
freaking something else, man. Is that BB's dad? That looks like BB's dad. Oh, here we go. Episode 4. All right. Moving it forward. I heard this is where it gets good. So. Yeah, everybody says chapter 4 is insane. Crap, this is just like so dark and this game, man. This game never ceases to amaze. Whoa, are these are, are these all BTs? not gecko i don't know if i ever deliver the baby i'm just a delivery guy i'm just trying to deliver some letters guys don't shoot me isn't there some kind of code that says like you don't shoot the delivery guy oh my god keep running sam i have no idea what's happening right now Oh my god. This is amazing. Run, Sam, run. War. War never changes. Oh my god. I don't know how to, how do I get my gun out? Oh, like this. Assault rifle. I don't even know what's shooting at me. I have I have never used a gun in this game up until this point. I've basically been a pacifist or I've used my fists to knock people out. I've not actually killed anyone. Better than in the last battlefield. Uh, gotta be way back. Uh, also, he is remarkably calm right now. He's quite impressive. For a postman, he's got ice in his veins. crazy baby dolls it's just just 12 dolls and a man i don't either rouse i have no idea so don't worry you're not alone and i've been playing the game can you imagine if we could summon cigarettes like that smoking would be cool again my baby the 
baby is this guy's, so we might get some in we might get some interesting insight here, Rouse. Is that Higgs? Oh boy. Who is that asshole anyway? Find a way to escape the battlefield. Will do. Oh grab another assault rifle. Thank God I can carry a lot of inventory. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. So this looks like World War One or two. Shotgun. All right. Just picking everything up. Find a way out. All right, here we go. Yeah, I mean, World War One was like super trenchy. Okay. Gun shoots fast. Reload, Sam. We're getting out. We're getting out of the trench, man. Just a normal war. He is, Sam is the epitome of calm people live. I don't know. Oh, jeez. Right. There's a whale. What is go? What the hell is going on? This feels dangerous to be up here. So I'm gonna go back down. We're gonna check for a blood bag here. You think they had Monster Energy drink in World War One? Give me that blood. Does anybody know if a thousand milliliters of blood is realistic? Like, is that how much blood we actually have in our body? I don't know the answer to that. I think it's something like eight liters total. Okay. Yeah, I guess, or a thousand milliliters would be, that would be what? One liter? If I'm, yo, where am I going? BB's not being particularly helpful. Where's Die Hardman when you need him? Average adult is around five to six liters. Okay. That's a lot. Like, that's a lot of blood. By the way, when I was a kid, I used to think that when your heart pumped, all of your blood went down to your heart, and then when it pumped, it went to all of your extremities, and it was like this in-out thing. I never realized that the blood is just constantly being pumped and circulating. It took me until I was probably like 20 years old to realize that that was the case. Not even lying. He is calling for BB, but BB's on my chest. So, BB, where do I go, man? Hey, I ain't that kind of Dr. Gecko. How many pounds of feelings do you think we fit in our brains? Oh, there we go. Another soldier. I wonder if I'm going... Oh, that's him. Hey, you dick. Wow. The recoil on these guns. Oof. I couldn't post a direct... Vex, are you Coconut Man approved? All 
All right, man. You're done. You're done, though, man. Would you put that on a list of dumbest things a person could believe, Gecko? Go, go, go. Hey, Wolfer. Yeah, ve uh, Vex, make sure that you go to disclaimers and rules and that you hit the acknowledgement statement. And if you become Coconut Man approved, your name will turn green and then you should be able to post direct links at that point. need to hide behind something. Over here. Oh my god. I was not prepared for this. Tonight. I was thinking this was going to just be some casual deliveries. Just, you know, doing my part. For the greater good. Oh boy, where I'm in trouble here. Shotgun? Yeah, we'll work out. There we go. Good. Full retreat. Full retreat. Yeah, full retreat. I like that. Get out of here. A grenade? Oh, Jesus. It's all right, BB. Just chill, buddy. I got to fight your dad for some reason that I have absolutely no idea what it is. Oh my God. That's awful, Wolfer. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm glad you're okay, but that's... Man, that sucks. Okay, drop the handgun. Drop the assault rifle. All right. BB, I got, I got no time for you right now to be crying like this. No time. I'll go another. Wait, use. Drop that blood bag. That blood bag. Oh shit. Pick up this one. Got my blood bag. We're good. Were you able to like get help, Wolfer? Or did you just drive away or how you all right? That'd be terrifying, man. You guys can take three shotgun shots. All right. The BS level is much higher than my BS tolerance for the day. That would make sense. I mean, I don't know that anybody would ever be ready to tolerate a, having your car stolen. You no, know, I wouldn't be. I like it, the shotgun. Die, BB's dad. Oh no. This is a bit clunky. Uh, assault rifle. Let's go with that. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Please be it. I don't know if I still have deliveries on my back or not. Uh, they're mostly weapons. Uh, so I really desperately need a blood bag. Uh, we'll go ahead and eat. Oh yeah, I can eat these guys. I forgot about that. We'll go ahead and drink an energy drink. Thank God I have those bugs that Fragile gave me. All right, so we got his footsteps. This is helpful. We're going to go this way. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, Hey, I'm glad it worked. Wolfer. That's terrifying shit. I, I have no idea what I would do in that situation. It'd probably freeze because I have a freeze response. Oh, 
Alright. No. Get up. Get up, Sam. Come on, man. Oof. Yeah, I am spraying and paying the hell. Spraying and praying. Damn it. All right, that should be it. Please be it. All right, we got it. Find the mysterious man. Sometimes being tired can have that effect, Wolfer. It does look dark, doesn't it, Goof Off? I'm not really sure why. Yo, can't have my baby. at some point there's an explanation for why these things are happening we'll see we are not at the end of the game I don't think we're even close I'm in episode four I don't know how many total episodes there are but I this doesn't feel like we're anywhere close No idea. Also, adjusting my gamma is going to be a challenge. So. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that tonight, but I'm going to play with that because it does look a little bit darker than usual. I do I will say okay so I love the game I absolutely love the game I will say that I do wish there was some explanation of some of this stuff 16 episodes oh my god all right so I'm back Sam do you read me yeah everything okay where am I say again what happened to me? The second you left the distribution center, the storm blinked out, just like that. Chiral density dropped almost as fast. I got caught in the storm, and I was in a war zone. You've been daydreaming, Sam? Comms were only down for a second. No, it was much longer than that. There was this soldier. He tried taking my baby. Hi, Victoria. So, the little one can vouch for me. Sam, it's been less than a minute since we last spoke. I can't be right. I was there for for hours, it felt like. I don't know. I'd say hours. Maybe you should rest a bit. Never mind. Coming to you. It's a shame I can't meet you halfway. Yeah, I know. You kid, right? Be careful, Sam. I'm looking forward to seeing you. It's been a while since I've had company. I'm trying out the cheap frat sunglasses for a little while. You know, those other ones were so cool. I'm going to go take a shower. 
That seems appropriate, right? Should probably go shower after that nonsense. Sam, proceed to Mama's lab. Mama was part of the Cupid R&D team. However, from the start, she had concerns about its long-term viability. Felt Cupid's had fundamental flaws, which might explain the strange phenomenon you experienced and the spike in chiral density. You should pay her a visit. See what she has to say. Sure thing, Die Hardman, after I take a shower. Even though it was only a minute, I need a nap. I'll put the cool glasses on too. Back by popular demand. I, which I don't understand, Skog. Sleeping while being like dirty is morning, such a horrible feeling. Thank you for your generosity. So, yeah, like laying on that bed. Look at that. Soaked in blood and dirt and World War I nonsense. And a man, can, a man can sleep through anything. This is a different cutscene for the shower than we usually get. I agree, Jay. That's why I wear them. Ugh. I am early, Gappy. Went went live a little early tonight. I had some extra time. Allie went to bed early. <clears throat> and I was just going to be sitting here getting ready to go live. So I was like, well, I might as well go live then. So, good to have you here, man. It's good to have all of you here. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. I know Saturday nights are usually a little bit... They're usually the the night where people don't watch Twitch. But the fact that you guys are hanging out with me tonight... Very cool of you to do. Your new system's running. I'm excited, dude. That That's that's good stuff. Running nice and smooth. No issues. That's got to feel good. So, Zoiku, there was this moment in the game early on where he, the BTs, those, like, dead things or whatever, they were grabbing Sam and, like, touching him. And I think that the handprints are left behind by those, but I don't know about any of the specifics of why he has the handprints on him yet. That hasn't really been explained. No, we have the chiral beer here, playful, instead of monster for whatever reason. I don't really know why. See what you got for me, BB. And I'm not sure what the diorama is, honestly. Take a look. This is what the world looked like hundreds of millions of years ago. It was just one big continent. And. Oh, it's because of his. Oh, okay. It's because of his allergy. Got it. What's up, Lunar? I'll show you the real thing soon. I promise. People playing groups, Vex. The whole wide world will be yours to explore. You'll be able to go wherever you want. Even the moon. Uh, usually a couple minutes, Jay. All right. Nice and cleaned up. You know, the moon's haunted, man. I don't know that I don't know that I want to go to the moon. Follow the chiral crystal. Recycle the chiral 
crystals at the distribution center west of Capital Knot City. Deliver at least one container of sticky guns. Deliver to the engineer. Okay, so this is where... So, okay, how do I get rid of these? Goof off. I'm confused because I don't see a prompt for how to delete these. I would love to get rid of them, though. Because I can see where I can hide them, but I don't see where I can delete them. I can actually move this forward by walking it. Okay, so I left the distribution center. Mama's lab is there. Well, I have to go to Mama's lab, so I suppose that's where I'm going to go then. All right. I'm just going to do that. You gotta check out sponge monkeys. What are sponge monkeys? Is that like a band? Otter helmet engaged. Might be better off with a chopstick. Wait, what? I'm so confused. I don't know what's going on. Highlight the order and hit X from the menu you were on, and then it gives you the option to redeploy the order or cancel. Oh. Oh, sweet. Okay. That's nice. So I can get rid of this. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Goof Off. You the best. I'm just going to go ahead and delete some of these real quick. Ah, all right. I'll deal with that one later. Okay. I believe he's making quotes of a show or something like that. Okay. If you Google, we like the moon, it'll come up on Google. It's from a song called We Like the Moon from the Sponge Monkeys. Oh, I've never heard of the Sponge Monkeys. What kind of music do they do? Since I can't Google it right now. Mama's lab. Here we are. The otter has arrived. What's up, Zine? Murderer indeed. Murdery. How are you this evening? You lived up to your reputation with Michael Myers. By the way. I'm not sure I said that. Whoa. Angel. Hello. People who are coming with Angel. Hello, it's me, Dr. Mick, the guy you heard last night playing Dead by Daylight with Angel and Zine and Lobro and Gentle Claw. Good evening. Welcome in. Nice to meet you. Those of you who I have not seen before, welcome in. I'm Dr. Mick, licensed couple and family therapist, PhD in human development. This is Game Sessions with a Therapist where I play really cool games like Death Stranding and talk about mental health therapy, psychology, all sorts of fun stuff with the greatest community in the entire world. Angel, I am very thankful for you bringing your people by. Uh, and I hey, you do this up. channel to try to destigmatize mental health and therapy, to try to make therapy more accessible, take down some of the stigma that we have about mental health, uh, particularly for gamers. 
Uh, I specialize hey, clinically in working with well. severe and debilitating anxiety, polyamorous relationships, all sorts of other cool stuff. Uh, you're welcome to ask me whatever you like. I don't do therapy on stream, but I do provide mental health resources and all and uh, resources, information. I do different segments where hey, I talk about mental health topics. I help viewers find therapists, all sorts of stuff like that. I also have a YouTube with daily mental health tidbits. And if you subscribe to that, you get a mental health tip every single day straight to your inbox or straight to your YouTube or wherever you want it to come to. So anyway, welcome in. I'm so glad to have all of you here. I'm playing Death Stranding, one of the most confusing yet awesome games I've ever played in my entire life. Really glad to have you all here, especially those of you that stayed through the raid and navigated the the ads if you had to watch ads. So thanks for like making it through that because I never make it through that. Zine and uh, Zine, it was good to see you, bud. And again, everybody else, Teacup, thank you for the follow. Wally's World, thank you for the follow. Dragon Skull, thank you for the follow. Angel, how was your stream? How are you? It's great to have you here. I don't take for granted that you shared your community with me. Thank you very much for that. We're about to watch a cutscene, but oh yeah, the thing is, I, I stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. I focus heavily on chat, even though I'm playing games. I care more about chat than I do any game I ever play on on stream. So, good to have you here. Thanks for being here. All right. Watch some crazy stuff go down. But seriously, Angel, thank you. You rock and you matter. So does everybody else here. It's a confusing yet beautiful game we're playing here. Oh, yeah, and also, if you ever have a question for me, just at me. I'm okay with that. I know some streamers really don't like that. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. I hope you rest well. Uh-oh. Baby BT. No. Don't worry, Sam. She doesn't fight. Glad you made it. It is Monster Simulator. I've been like shooting guns and stuff. You like the other sunglasses better? See, I know. I keep going back and forth. Oh, we're already in episode five. Well, that was quick. Also, it's super hot in my apartment right now. She's hungry. What the? Yeah, what does? But it's exactly what I was thinking, Sam. This is so odd. And that umbilical cord is going to watch it be attached to her. Yep. Oh, man. Even though she can't drink it, my body keeps making it. Going through the motions really helps with the soreness, though. What is she? She's my daughter. And I'm her mama. It's okay. She's only connected to me. It's not like the other BTs. They just keep adding you shit. See it, right? You're hooked up. Now you know why I can't leave. Hello, Guardian. I mean, the, the, the implication here is that the baby is dead. And that she's still attached to it so somehow. About the super I don't know if that's some metaphor for grief, but... Do you think the grown-ups could talk for a minute? I'm in episode five, Barry. Thank Good you. to see you. How do you do? Look at this. This was the chiral density when the supercell appeared. But almost immediately after, it dropped to normal levels. In other words, the storm vanished in less than a second. That's impossible. Okay, let's pull the data from your cufflinks and take a look then. Well, 
Well, that's all pretty crazy, but at least you're not. Timestamps in the logs support your story. Best guess I can muster is you were trapped between two different space times. Two different space times. Wait a HQ second. HQ is doing a deeper analysis. Wait a second. With. Is this game? Don't answer this if you know, but this just made me think. I wonder if the strands are a. I'm wondering if this game is potentially predicated on string theory or something like this, where like, you know, there's like a million different, there's an infinite amount of possible realities that all potentially happen simultaneously or whatever, like, and the strands or the strings. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, man. Hi, teacup. Hi, jet. Aren't the glasses glorious? He is one fabulous looking man. Multiverse theory. Pseudoscience at its core. I know. I know string theory is not a like a acceptable thing, but I don't know. Is the frequency spectrum. But, but but if she's talking about being stuck between two space times, some kind of parallel or parallel universe or multiverse or whatever, I don't know. I don't know. With a little effort, they should be able to figure out where you were sent. Oh, what's up, Chief? Good to have you in here. The multi-string theory. She's been crying more at night. Chiral density increases in regions connected to the chiral network, but the numbers are way, way higher than I projected. That's bad, right? Yeah. More connections means more chirelium. Early on, Bridges did acknowledge this as a potential problem, so I installed special limiters in the cupids to keep the chiral levels in check. Looks like the limiter on yours is faulty, though. The supercell and the temporal phenomenon that you experienced may be related to all this. Are you saying if I keep extending the network, we might be in for more temporal phenomena? Maybe. Or worse, we cause another death stranding. Uh, but you got a solution. Of course I've got a solution. Right over here, in fact. We just need to integrate a limiter into this new cupid I threw together. Thought I'd make you one since you said you were coming. They look the same. I'm getting iced out, baby. Ba -boom, ba -boom. I feel like we should have get low playing in the background. No, crisis not averted. We need to rewrite the software to work with the new hardware. Well, then get to it. Yeah, um, no can do. I designed the hardware, but the software was written by someone else. Well, <laughs> right, Saul. Her. The name's Lochner. She was a member of Bridges One. You'll have to head to Mountain Knot City. All right, I gotta take a cupid there anyway. Oh, good. That's great. Here we also, go that's so cool to hear, Chief. I don't know what's gotten into her lately. She's so scared. Look at her. Okay, so I can see her when my BB is plugged in. Maybe the other side wants her back. Or maybe... She wants to go back. How was it, D? We can't keep on like this. That much I know. You want to tell me what happened? She was due. I was in the hospital waiting for a C-section. Then the terrorists hit us. Those who don't know what's happening, you are not alone. Hi, M Dash. What? Hello? Is anyone there? 
I was pinned under the rubble. Nothing to do with. Wait. And wait. <laughs> Felt like forever. But no one came. At least I had air and water. That would be awful. Days went by. The water ran dry and the cold set in. Cheers to that, Gecko. That's that's exciting stuff, dude. Now you wait like mama's waiting. They're in the rubble. Oh. But instead of bringing life into the world, I brought death. Ooh. All right. When the time fell stopped, my baby started to cry. She cried, cried, cried. Her life was the price I had to pay to survive. She saved me. So I wasn't totally wrong. But she's a BT. The ties that bind her to this place bind me too. You could say I've never really been discharged. And you're okay with that? I mean, you know she's gone. You want to live your life in the shadow of the dead? So that's some complex grief there. Sort of, to, I mean, I know you may be joking, Zed, but I actually am going to answer that. That's some complex grief. There's uh there's probably a mixture of okay so there's grief you lost a child plus there's survivor's guilt and then she's going through basically being re-traumatized on the daily because the baby is stuck between worlds so she's holding on to the baby partly to satiate whatever desire she has to keep it alive and to mitigate whatever anxiety and grief she may have but is also holding the baby in suspension. So she probably knows she's causing the baby some form of pain, which is if as the mother, that's going to be equally difficult. And so she is like simultaneously experiencing all this shit. And then having to just like live with it. And is, I suppose processing the grief in some way, by the way that she's talking about this with Sam, but I mean, my heart goes out to her. That's that's horrible, right? Like she lost her baby. A lot of parents will say that, you know, they would rather die for their children rather than have their children die for them. So now she has this story of my baby is dead and I'm alive. I'm feeling horrible because of the fact that I'm still alive, yet people will probably celebrate that I'm alive. That is, whoa. Come on. You of all people, you chose the dead over the living. Why else would you be here? I just remembered. Dead men told me repatriates have special blood. Mind if I take a sample? Yeah, sure. Suck me dry. You already bleed me in my sleep. A bit cold, ain't you? Just. Um. Does the survivor's guilt have the same effect when the baby never really left ish? Uh, hard to tell. I don't feel like I know enough about her yet to be able to maybe make that call, but it could. It could have the same effect. In fact, it could be that it's becoming even more salient given the fact that the baby is there, but 
it would depend on the way that she is perceiving the baby's presence and how that's wrapped up in the narrative of her grief there all done i want to run a test mama are you I'm sorry, Sam. Would you mind leaving us alone for a while? Yeah. I gotta get to work. Could be, Saul. Sam? Hey, forget what I said about chiral spikes. Reconnecting the world comes first. Maybe we're making things worse. Maybe not. But it's the only plan we've got. Good luck, Sam. Sam, the delivery terminal outside still works. Go ahead and get it connected. I'll give you further instructions from there. Death of a child teacup is usually enough to destroy a marriage or a parenting relationship. A uh, lot of couples will usually it will end up splitting unless they do a significant amount of work when they lose a child. Massive correlation. Sam, your next objective is to bring Mountain Knot City into the network. Now, this route will take you to a way station and on to a distro center north of the city. By the way, Chief, I'm so there. glad to hear that, tricky. seriously. You'll have to take I'm really glad you're here and sharing with us. Still want me using this Cupid on the way? Software's not been rewritten yet. It's fine. If you link up Mountain Knot City after your Cupid is fixed, the update should filter through the network, stabilizing the connection. It's just one more reason to get there ASAP. But for now, make do with the Cupid you've got. That's the most frustrated anyway, that Die Hardman has ever sounded. Yeah. We'll just have to hope she's all right and keep going. It's what she would want. Anyway, check in at Lake Knot City's Southern Distro Center before you hit the road. And good luck out there. By the way, Sam, I've added a zipline schematic to your PCC. Figured it would come in handy. All you need to set one up is at least two anchors. Why bother carrying cargo across a river or up a steep hill when you can just send it through the air? Am I right? If you want a little hands-on experience, you can use the anchors outside my lab. Have yourself some fun. The good news is, Fragile's available and willing to lend you a hand. Of course she is. If you want Fragile to send you, you'll need to head to a private room. South Knot City looks closest from what I can see. It'll be a lot quicker than walking, that's for sure. But we're gonna but walk. take any cargo with you, so there's that. It's up to you. Just remember the options there if you need it. Yeah, Die Hardman sounded frustrated with me there. He does not normally sound that way, but he got a little bit snippy. You lot oh wow Wolfer, I appreciate you sharing that. That's Did I tell you we added It's hard that's option. it's one of the hardest things a person can go through uh is losing a child. Build a few Like them in line. Give it a try. Okay. That there's an I get it. Leave okay. me God. Leave me alone. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take two of these. Good enough for now. A TV show helped me figure out which TV show, Chief. I should probably... Uh, I'll, when I get to South Knot City, I'll grab... I'll make some ladders. If the zip lines can go up it... So does, does Sam, like, chuck the other side of the zip line up the mountain? Like, how... Or do I have to climb the mountain first? All right, we're going to go do collect the rare junk components. Correct. Retrieve at. All right, retrieve a waterfall basin. That's what we're going to do first. Okay. 
<laughs> right, playful? I know. You're not wrong. Uh... Yo, what is going on here, Sam? Can you... All right. There we go. Oi. Oi. Oh, man, Shy Red. That is... That's a hell of a thing to put on a person. Got it. So I can make a whole a whole network of zip lines up the mountain. That sounds fabulous. Have you gotten to high speeds on your bike yet? No, not really. I don't know what would be considered to be high speeds though. Maybe when I go down the mountains like this. No. Low speed. Oh boy. Should I zip line? Oh, 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 This is, oh, wait a minute. Hey, somebody was nice enough to put this rope here. Thanks, man. We're going down the river in my otter helmet. Cause I'm doing some exploring. She'll call the fosters that my boss recommended to make me make it better. Rosie O'Donnell of all freaking people said it. No kidding. What is, so wait, what specifically did she say, chief? I'm curious. I don't know if you wrote that already and I just missed it, but damn, whoever placed this is the MVP. This is awesome. Is there another one? Please tell me there's another one. Whoa, 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 whoa. No! Ooh! Sam. Sam. Okay, there we go. Oh. Oh. We're almost there, Sam. There we go. Damn, this is this beautiful or is this beautiful? Beautiful like all of you who are hanging out. By the way, if you were a person who stayed through the raid this long, you kick serious ass. Look at that. Gorgeous. Beautiful views with beautiful people. Now, you listen, any of you listen to Billie Eilish? There's some song that's on the radio every now and then that I've heard, but beyond that, not really. She doesn't have the type of music that I'm into. We're a poached steak. Where are the rest of these materials? I should probably knock the raid out of the URL if I'm going to lurk here. Wait, what? What do you mean, Guardian? Is there an option to not make to make him not grunt so much? No, unfortunately. <laughs> he sure does grunt a lot. We got to find, okay. So I got to somehow find more of these things. And oh, there, oh, geez. So is this a zip line that somebody set up then? Maybe. Of course the minerals are on the other side. Of course they are. I 
I really hope I have the stamina to make it through this. This is going to be interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Battle, Sam. Battle. Oh, God. Oh, God. B oh, BB, it's fine. It's fine, Cletus. Just hang in there. You're all right. You're all right. This was easier than walking. Just a nice, yeah, we're just, we're chill. Nice and relaxing. It's all good. I am a Star Wars fan, Titan. Yes. By the way, good to see you tonight, man. Uh, I am not particularly a fan of the Mandalorian though. Allie and I've been watching the Mandalorian and I think it's boring. If, <clears throat> if baby Yoda wasn't in it, I would have, I don't think I would have watched all the way up through the. Like through the last episode. Nice. I just don't think it's well fleshed out. Do you? I just think, I just think it's boring. I don't know. Like I want more, I want more depth. It feels like a very surface level show. stick nice pacing's much slower but it makes me so happy because i love slower paced shows hey if you're into slower paced shows that's for you yeah are you familiar with grand admiral thrawn oh god not off the top of my head Grand Admiral, Admiral Thrawn, which I, I have not watched like the Clone Wars. Like I love, I love Star Wars, but I don't watch much of the auxiliary stuff. I played a lot of Star Wars video games and I have watched all the movies, obviously, but. So I got busy right after you mentioned the loss of a children correlates strongly to broken families. I met a friend after the fact who had almost the exact same family dynamic and situation that I had. Both of us had an older brother commit suicide when we were early teens. Where it made my family come together and be very expressive of love, affection, and caring. It ended up tearing my family apart despite all the situational similarities. Tearing his family apart despite all the situational similarities was always interesting. Uh, I did not know that, Zine. I appreciate that you feel comfortable sharing that um i really do and yeah it, it, it's not like it's not destined to happen that a family is going to fall apart when there's a death of a child uh but the the correlates are there and it is quite remarkable how you 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 sometimes learn a lot about families dynamics and and whether they're oriented toward closest first distance which there's that uh dichotomy again in the context of trauma but i really appreciate you sharing that zine that was that's awesome of you to do and teacup thank you very much for the bits i appreciate that carl deckman thank you for the follow i appreciate that as well you guys are awesome there we go Oh, from the book universe that I am definitely not familiar. I did not read. I don't, I don't read for pleasure. So. Promise you have a, uh, I don't intend to have that, have a child try, try red. So you don't have to worry about that. But of course I would not do that. Are you, you kidding me? Up, no dude. way. Good. Acto master. Thank you very much for the for the sub. I appreciate that. It's very kind of you to do. Uh, chief applied to me above. Oh, thank you for drawing my attention to it. I missed it. Oh, there it is. She said, I never felt safe, so I could never commit. I was so sure everything was going to be taken away from me, so I took it away from myself. Always with one foot out the door, never taking time to connect. If you keep making decisions the way you've been making decisions, you're going to ruin every good thing that comes your way, no matter how good, no matter how great it is, going to blow it up because you don't trust it. Wow, that's some profound stuff, Chief. I can see why that would have had an effect on you. 
That's a great line. <laughs> okay, I said I don't read for fun, playful. I read for my dissertation. I read I read for work. I read to keep up on certain research, but I do not read for fun. Like my I my idea of fun is not sitting down on the couch and grabbing a book. That is that is not pleasurable for me. Pretty open about it happening. Along with the clinical depression my mother developed afterwards. And I grew up with where my motivation is to take strong interest in mental health and trying to help prevent that is one of the driving principles of how I conduct myself on Twitch. Well, you certainly do a fabulous job in the way that you carry yourself, Zine. And that is uh, really cool that you could take that and channel it into doing doing good for yourself and for others, man. Big cheers to that. I'm glad to know you. Glad to know all of you. This exoskeleton is working out okay for me, Gappy, but it's a bit of a... Uh, not doing so well with the climbing here and Simu I hope you have a good night thank you for being here counterpoint you read reddit that is true I do read reddit I have no idea how to get out of this right now I'm gonna need either a ladder or a zip line and I don't have any ladders on me I really ought to start carrying tools around I, I I don't know why I keep trying to just like straight up raw dog this game and like not use the tools that they're giving to me Shifted Spirit, thank you very much for the host. I appreciate that. I'm actually not a fan of, of Doritos, Jay. I think they're gross. The Cool Ranch ones, I guess, are okay. The Taco Bell ones that they had back in the day were pretty decent, but the normal, like, regular Doritos are not... I'm not into. All right, we're gonna try to go up this. This reminds me of in Destiny One, when the when Rise of Iron came out and they had the mountain that you had to climb in the new zone. This reminds me of that for those of you that play Destiny. Try making the zip line. Oh, I will, but I want to see if I can climb this first. Oh. Cause there's a, there's a rope right there. Come on, Sam. Let's go. Let's get to that rope, buddy. We will use the tools that are available to me in the environment first. We have equine therapy at, at work. But it's off site. So I never get to see the horsies. Oh man. Horses make me so nervous. I know I've talked about that before. I appreciate that you don't shy away from sharing your opinions, even when they might be considered unpopular. <laughs> hey, I am who I am. You know, I can celebrate where all of you guys come from, your opinions. And uh, I can also be secure in mine. If I don't like Doritos, I don't have to be ashamed of that. You know? Also, why can't I climb this rope right now? What's going on here? There we go. Look at this upper body strength. Holy crap. I realized I had a massive issue because my sweetheart finally told me he loves me. I got super happy. Like I'm mortified. I kept getting angry at him. And I was like, he's not doing anything. Why am I so angry and trying to push back? <sighs> then I heard that and realized I do it that with everything in life. Wow. Well, Chief, that is, I mean, having a profound realization like that can do wonders. So I think it's so cool that you did and that it's been meaningful for you. It's true, Gecko. So are you. I can't stand gravy and grits and I'm from the South. I like grits and I do like gravy. And I am not from the South. But again, to each their own. For FYI, press left stick when an available vehicle, preferably a motorcycle, and you go turbo boost mode. Oh. By the way, I'm very happy with the way that I just was able to climb out of that. Now we begin our walk. This is what I love about this game right here. Making these walks 
talking with you guys, and just chatting it up and having a good time. It's my favorite. I was raised to hide my opinions when they might make other people uncomfortable. I also had a friend who's awesome, but always shares her opinions really strongly without concern for other people's feelings in a way that I find scary and triggering. So it's nice to see a healthier version of that. Well, I'm glad I can model that, M Dash. I was raised, my, my parents were very much in the camp of allowing me to express my individuality. They really were, they had a big impact on that. They were very much like, you know, you can like what you like. We support what you like. We want you to make your own decisions. We want you to be able to act on the things that you want, but we also want you to consider other people when you do that. And you need to recognize that not everybody's going to share your opinion. And that in fact, having, a, having strong opinions can lead to people not liking you. I think we all have strong opinions on certain things. And it's tough to hold strong opinions when we don't have a particularly high tolerance for the anxiety of the social consequences of having those opinions. Sometimes that leads people to stuff their opinions or not feel free, like they're free to share them or to actually end up absorbing the opinions of others. And I think a lot of times people's ability to express opinions in a healthy way can be reflective of self-esteem. Can be. not, And that's not the only factor, but I see the intersection of those two things a lot. We lost the motorcycle because it's on the other side of the river, by the way. Is it possible to make a children's show about therapy and mental health? Um... Would, I suppose, but you, it, I don't know that it could be directly about it because, the, it, I mean, mental health and psychology and therapy is so complex. Therapy, I don't know if it would be useful to children, but I mean, something that allows children to effectively learn how to express their emotions and, and, and understand consequences of certain behaviors and stuff, I'd be down for. But a show about therapy for children... Mm. I think he's clapping because he likes what I just said or just I was raised to not be seen or heard unless directly spoken to it is quite incredible one of the things I love about family therapy and I love just about being a therapist is learning the way that people being like the way people were raised and what role they had to take in their family and what they were taught about how you engage with others the way that that shows up in adulthood is quite remarkable There's a Northwestern University study in which autism may be linked to a genetic mutation. I have not seen that study. I think I also have friends who freak out on me or who aren't very good at healthy discussion when it comes to everyday things. When I share opinions that they don't like, meeting my husband was a game changer because he's great at conversations like that and made me feel like I wasn't a freak. That's wonderful, M Dash. Uh, this trip feels futile going this way. I don't feel... I should have gone the other way, so we're going to go the other way. Keep chatting while I go this way toward the strands. Okay. Decided I'm going to pursue psychology as a career. I don't know why I didn't consider it sooner. Well, hell, what brought you to that conclusion, Thy Duck? Like, what? what is it about it that made you choose that? Also, I'm happy to answer anything about what that's like to pursue that career if you ever need it. I'm here for you. I was a first-generation college student, so I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own. I'm also the only therapist in my family. So I'm always happy to share whatever I can to help make that process of figuring it out easier for people because it can be quite daunting. Grin and bear it. You're saying you like seeing how we awkwardly try to figure out how to interact in this world? Because let me tell you, it's definitely interesting to me how awkward I can be. I do. I really do. You can chalk up a lot of behaviors and interaction styles to being learned. And when things are learned... What the hell? When things are learned, it means that they can be unlearned. And it also means that you can learn alternatives. 
And it's actually quite surprising how many people don't realize that. And I don't know if it's just because it's intuitive based on the fact that I got a degree in human development where we talk about behavior and learning and conditioning and all these sorts of things and how people develop through learning. But so many of the ways that we interact in this world and show up in relationships are choices. And they're choices we make on autopilot oftentimes because of what we've learned. We've learned what to anticipate in terms of the response that we will get when we show up in a certain way. We learn how to survive by engaging in various types of behaviors and various interaction styles. And then we often carry those into other relationships because that's the what we've built our expectations around. One of the things of why, why therapists like, you know, me do family of origin work is oftentimes because in order for people to engage in a certain level of change they want to engage in, they have to be able to acknowledge that people they are, are interacting with in the present are not the same people that are, that they interacted with when they were growing up or in a previous relationship and being able to detach that and remind ourselves that each unique person that we interact with is driven by an entirely different context which means that what we've learned in other relationships may or may not actually play out in the current one very important and sophisticated stuff a lot of empathy titan which i know sounds like a cliche answer but a lot of empathy and understanding of the reasons by which we polarize. I just love learning about psychology. Figure it'd be a really good fit for me. That's a really good place to start, Thy Duck. Being interested in what you're learning is super important. Sister really recently pointed out that we're really the deadbeats of the family compared to our cousins. Comparisons make our comparisons can drive some pretty rough anxiety. I don't know if that's the case for you, Rouse, but I'm not generally a fan of comparisons. Huh. Footpath. In that way, anyway. But. I had a conversation with a friend of mine today about how sometimes things get messy between him and other friends and had this strange feeling afterwards, which consisted of some gladness for being able to have the combo, but also a bit uncomfortable because it wasn't easy. That's yeah, dude, that's because you did something new. That's not easy to do. There's a reason that people ghost and why people just put up with shit, Matt. And that's because having conversations like that is hard because the present is difficult when we have conversations like that people have to attend to the present and we do not like doing that as much as we may think we do the present is anxiety provoking the present puts pressure on us we have to respond to the present in ways we do not have to respond to the past or to the future so that's why you hear people talk in past and future tense way more often than they talk about the present because of how difficult it is for us to stay there and because of the demands of being in the present. So, Matt, I give you a lot of credit, dude, not only for doing what you did, but also for being in therapy and being like, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm in therapy. I'm talking about this stuff. I've got some support around doing what I want to do. And as a result, I'm going to grab this by the horns and I'm going to make it happen. Like, that's a big deal. There are Titan. There's lots of them. Backfire effect would be a good place to start, which we talked about a while back. Cognitive dissonance, all sorts of stuff. Do I self-reflect often? I do, Zine. I actually spend a lot of time, especially since I became a therapist, I spend a lot of time thinking about the way that I show up in various contexts. I think it's really important for me to stay cognizant of the ways in which I am thinking about myself, what I'm attending to versus what I'm not attending to, 
uh, thinking about what my emotional experience is and what my response to that emotional experience is and how to be more uh, articulate about it and how to be more open and direct about it when I need to be, that kind of stuff. But yes, I spend a lot of time in self-reflection. I also actually spend a lot of time in self-reflection while I'm walking to and from work because I have a 40 minute walk between where I live and where my office is. So it's a really great time to be able to self-reflect. And I actually encourage being able to do that and being intentional about it also builds a sense of comfort with, I, at least for me, it's helped me build a sense of comfort with, with who I am and how I think and just kind of being my own anthropologist about that. You say you can unlearn behavior, so to learn better behavior. Hey. But how do you explain it to others that I'm changing my mental behavior for the better to others who refuse or can't understand? Uh, that can be really difficult, Shifted. Uh, the question that I would usually follow up with that is why, why do other people need to follow that or understand that? And if they can't, then that may just mean that they just don't understand because doing mental work is a complicated thing and a lot of people don't take time to consider it, so... But yeah, I mean, engaging in alternative cognition and learning new ways of self-talk is very similar to engaging in new behaviors. It's anxiety provoking, it's difficult. Am I right in saying that sort of uncomfortable feeling is akin to distress tolerance? It's probably akin, to, well, uh, it's a, so distress tolerance, Matt, is, is something that we ex just, when we experience distress, it's our ability to hang in there with it. So what we're, what you're talking about is whatever emotional experience you're having. And then your distress tolerance comes in when, if you experience that feeling as being distressing, then how long do you hang in there with it? And then make decisions about what you want to do with it. What do you disagree with Gecko? Trying to pull my shit together without therapy, and it's a bit difficult. Well, super difficult. Yeah, that's therapists exist because having a third party can be really helpful. Also, thank you for the follow, Night Elf, and thank you for the bits, gamer. I appreciate that. All right, now my real question Have you thought long and hard about how you use? I can see how that would have affected you as your own personal, and how did that make you feel, Grace? Yes. Although me saying I can see how that would have affected you is less about me asking how that makes a person feel and more about an acknowledgement that this, that a person was impacted in the way that they've explained to me that they were impacted. I have a lot of different phrases that I use that at their core say very similar things, which is generally a, I acknowledge your emotional experience right now as being valid. Uh, the motto is sort of the truncated brief version of those complex sentences. So you'll hear, hear me say things like it makes sense. You'll hear me say things like I can imagine, or I can see how that would affect a person. I, I can see that you are affected. I hear you that make like those types of things are ways of validating a person's experience, which is really important to do because our experiences are experiences. Stay focused. So yes, I have, I am aware of the things that I say in response to when people talk to me, or at least I try to be, I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that I'm like Mr. Reflection and that I know exactly what's going on with myself and others at all given times. But yes, I think about that. Gamer, how is GameStop going for you? You still liking it? I know this may sound rude, but I do at times feel there are certain groups of people not worth paying attention to or trying to appease when campaigning or saving politically or wrestling time trying to convince them of my views and policy. Is that bad? I mean, I think it's bad in that it potentially stifles coming together. Like, this, the thing that people don't really like to talk about in terms of, like, coming together and having unity is it does require some level of experience and willingness to lean in from our boundaries across the board. Now, are there some viewpoints and actions that we could say are inherently problematic because of the way in which those viewpoints manifest themselves to others? Absolutely. At the same time, 
rigidity can happen no matter where and rigidity is something that may not necessarily be bad but is absolutely something we have to be mindful of when we're rigid because when we set rigid boundaries we give people a we basically set the template for what people now have to navigate because we've said that i'm not going to be flexible here and that's where we get impasses I think you missed the thing I disagreed with, so I'll repost it here. Focusing your mind on the future and the past are huge evokers of things like anxiety, depression, respectively. Focusing on the present helps us to regulate these emotions. You said focusing on the present can be anxiety provoking. I think the true present focus is anxiety relieving. So I don't disagree with you, Gecko. I think, I think the thing that underpins what we're both talking about and maybe unifies it a bit is talking about context and how context matters present i see as being more anxiety provoking in interactions and in relationships as opposed to in self-talk so yes i am in agreement in terms of being present and acknowledging what our emotional experience is i think when we speak about our current present state or our present convictions or needs in the present relationally that tends to stir up anxiety because of the demands of that in a relational context if that makes sense I appreciate you repeating yourself, by the way. Is it possible to teach people to be empathetic? Yes. And I say you start as early as you can. Children tend to be innately empathic. Uh, we, we kind of like emotionally beat the empathy out of people when they become adults. The thing is though, in order for adults to effectively teach children empathy, they have to be empathic themselves. Big on holding adults accountable, by the way, when we talk about the intersection of adults and children, if you guys haven't picked up on that already. I will start shadowing in the utilization management on Thursday and Friday. Oh, man, that's good stuff, Victoria. I'm so glad to hear that. I will be excited to hear more about it as you go through it. I want to hear about it. So make sure you like DM me and stuff or tell me on stream or whatever. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, if I'm in a social situation in the present and I'm thinking about what's happening, I'm probably gonna freak out. Yeah, it's com again, it's com it's common. That's that's generally where I see it. It's get like getting people, getting a person in like say a couple context, getting that person to say, "I feel disappointed right now." Again, it calls to it calls for. Wait a second. I just got cargo stolen. Oh, you ass. Oh my God. Oh, you're, you're done for my dude. So, okay, here's the thing. This may be a somewhat, well, this isn't even unpopular. This is just, this is, I mean, in my experience, this has been helpful for me to realize, you know, I know that we're like, so we're talking about anti-vaxxers right now. Okay. And I acknowledge that you guys know how I feel about anti-vaxxers. Obviously, I think having an anti-vax mentality is problematic on many, many, many levels. Now, here's the thing. We have to acknowledge in this, in, in this circumstance that having an anti-vax attitude is indeed dangerous from what we know about how vaccines work okay like now i also recognize that i am pretty rigid in my belief in that but that's also because there's a lot of data to back me up now if we're going to have a conversation for example where we have somebody who is pro-vaccine and anti-vaccine if you want to facilitate an effective conversation between those two people and you actually want to bring them together and have some kind of discourse around it what has to happen is that the third party slash the person who is pro-vax and the person who is anti-vax have to be able to step in and acknowledge that where the other person is coming from for whatever the reasons makes sense to them so a person who holds an anti-vax mentality has drawn that conclusion because there is a linearity of logic that to them has led them to that decision that I am going to be anti-vax. 
could use that is more. that is a conclusion that i've drawn it's not something that i have just pulled out of thin air okay same thing with the person who is pro vaccination i am pro vaccination for a large amount of reasons and i could articulate to you all those reasons that have lead, led me to draw the conclusion that being vaccinated is what makes sense to me I'm never going to have an effective conversation with somebody who is anti-vax unless I can step in and empathize with their experience and at least show some degree of curiosity toward where are you coming from? Doing that now from a therapist perspective, I actually am ethically obligated to advocate for people and for social justice and all these sorts of things but you don't lift oppressive forces unless the oppressive forces to some extent feel understood for why it is that they're being oppressive and can form some level of alliance with the oppressed so that they can engage in alternative behaviors okay it's a very complicated thing i'm oversimplifying it for the sake of talking about it uh, on stream but that's the way that from an interactional standpoint and i said this the other night whenever you're in an argument with somebody it's because you're arguing with the logic that they have drawn and so to go at somebody and say that doesn't make any sense it may not make any sense to you but it makes sense to them and you would do well to be curious about their reasoning now at the same time yes it's good to have boundaries if you feel like you're being pushed uh in such a way where it seems like the person is being intentionally antagonistic then yeah draw some boundaries get out of there but that's anyway those are my thoughts because that was a little bit of the soapbox there but i just think that's important from a relational standpoint i have to i have to talk to people about that all the time in interactions that are a lot more benign than talking about something like vaccinations And the thing is that like proper discourse and effective communication and problem solving happens in the context of anxiety and disagreement and multiple perspectives. And if we take multiple perspectives as being arguments constantly and become on the defensive, yeah, we're not going to have effective discourse, but some intensity and some anxiety in social interactions and in discourse is not a bad thing. As you would imagine, I would say, since I talk about how anxiety is okay all the time. Yes, there was Titan. That was from one study that got revoked. The study no longer exists. Delegitimized. Yep. And it got run with. I think in some ways, I, I see a lot of times people's tension with like, you know, like flat earthing and all these things. I see a lot of that as being a fear of being stripped of our mental autonomy. When you have an expert tell you something and say something like, hey, the climate is changing. Uh, that for some people feels like an oppressive thing of like, I'm being told that the climate's changing and I'm not being allowed to think for myself. I'm not allowed to have autonomy about whether the earth is round or not, because it's been stated as fact. And so I'm going to assert my autonomy by stating the alternative. Uh, I have certainly seen that as another possible explanation. Z uh, Jay and Zeph, I'm glad you were here. Uh, I, I appreciate you being part of the chat. I hope you have a good night. Yeah, and see, that's fair, Wolfer. That's I think that's a totally fair way to engage in that type of conversation. So restated, we tend to approach arguments from a self-centric perspective of how can you not agree with me, whereas it's more productive to approach it from an empathic perspective of the other person where you first try to understand and consider what's behind why they feel different. Yeah, exactly, Zine. So, like, again, it's a realization that oh boy this is gonna be interesting it's a realization that whenever a person is are you kidding me whenever a person is engaging in the type of discourse that they're engaging in with you people enter into conversations and share their opinions in such a way to remind that like 
it makes sense to them. So you have to acknowledge validation, acknowledgement, empathy. Those are precursors to problem solving. You will not successfully problem solve in a relationship with a person, whether it's an intimate relationship or otherwise, you will not successfully problem solve until all the parties feel understood and validated for where they are at because you have to acknowledge where you are before you can really pay much attention to where you're going to go. So, yes. Yeah, Victoria. Um, there is... I think there's a conversation to be had about that. So... Okay, so this is another one of those instances where I just want to acknowledge really quick how awesome all of you are. Think about what we're talking about right now. Like, think about the type of stuff that we've been chatting about tonight and the fact that 71 of you currently are in this chat on Twitch being as respectful and curious and open and honest as, as you can be. I think that is remarkable. And it really is what makes this place special. So I, you guys all deserve a shitload of acknowledgement for that. Seriously, it's awesome. Oh, people were still polarized, Titan. We just didn't have social media to have external affirmation of our of our views. Like that's the thing is right now we also live in a world where there is societal affirmation for just about anything. If you want to go flat Earth, you can find groups that share that conviction. Whereas back before technology and social media was rampant, it would have been way harder to do that. Way harder. Begin scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons That's because you deserve to hear them, Skog. Cargo verified. Thank you. <laughs> I don't ever judge typing, Derp. Welcome to I... I I hit people with typos all the time. You mean polarized even immediately in the days after 9-11? Definitely didn't look like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have people, people, maybe not right away, but think about where the discourse has gone since, Titan. That doesn't just come out of thin air. Spontaneous development? Rare, y'all. And not reliable. I teach that in my human development class. Okay, so what's the best way to deal with the feeling that you're only that fringe friend in all the groups that people that you're with? Well, if it's a feeling, just acknowledging the feeling for what it is, gamer, right? Like, and then you have a decision of what to do with how you want to make meaning out of that and what behaviors you want to engage in. I'm always a fan of clear, open, direct, and honest communication. That if we feel a certain way with certain people to be able to articulate that and then to evaluate the way in which they respond to it, assuming that you've been respectful in the way you've delivered the message. Uh, well, me too, Titan. I agree. Always happy to get one, let me tell you. Oh, so Jet, that makes a lot of sense. Here's, the, like, that's the thing. I don't necessarily think it's the job of a person in a marginalized group to have to sympathize or empathize with their with the oppressive group. I think it's the it's the prerogative and the task of people in dominant groups to hold other people in dominant groups accountable through that empathy and understanding, connecting and then moving toward, let's discuss the consequences of your current convictions. I don't, I, I would never advocate for just an unabashed, constant validation from marginalized groups towards the oppressive groups. That's an unreasonable expectation. Damn, look at all the shit I can build now. Oh yeah, Skog, I've been told that that's a that's a Ryanism. Good work. And for what it's worth, I say for what it's worth a lot too. Yeah, I give you a lot of credit for what it's worth. Um, I'm trying to think of other Ryanisms. You guys could probably point them out better than I even could.